Over the last couple years, I've examined a wide range of conversions for Nintendo Switch. Some great, some less so, but it's always fascinating to see developers translate games built for more powerful hardware to Nintendo's Tegra X1 based handheld. Even in the best cases, however, the sacrifices are usually plain to see. Lower resolutions, lower frame rates, and a significant reduction in detail. Typical stuff, but with the right choices, the results can still impress. But what if I told you there was a conversion that managed to improve upon certain elements of the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the same game? That's where Alien Isolation comes in, one of my favorite horror action games of this generation. Released back in 2014 on both current and last generation consoles, Alien Isolation utilizes creative assemblies, in-house technology to great effect with high quality PBR materials, great post-processing, and moody lighting. And now, it's available on Nintendo Switch in what might be one of the finest conversions I've tested to date. This is the complete isolation experience on Switch, and in several ways at least, it exceeds the original current generation console version. Today then, we're going to check out the game on Switch while comparing it against both PS4 and PlayStation 3 versions. So, grab your motion tracker and let's get started. Alien Isolation is a game that comes from an unexpected place. Developed by Creative Assembly, a studio known for its remarkable real-time strategy games, Alien Isolation is more of an homage to System Shock through the lens of Alien. In fact, it's one of the first games to successfully deliver an experience worthy of that name. It started on last generation platforms, being first greenlit nearly 10 years ago, and it evolved over time. In his GDC talk, Alistair Hope even revealed what the game looked like during its original pitch demo. This is running on Xbox 360, and it's well worth checking out the full talk for additional information. By the time Alien Isolation launched in 2014 then, it had been developed across all viable platforms at the time, with varying degrees of success. The current generation console version on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 delivers 1080p output utilizing SMAA T2X, while the PS3 and 360 versions used much lower resolutions below 1280 x 720. Performance was unstable on last gen consoles, but relatively consistent on current generation machines, at least most of the time. No matter which version you play, however, the art direction, material quality, and design of the world is top notch. No game before has managed to successfully capture the look and feel of the original films quite like this. The heavy reliance on post-process effects such as film grain and chromatic aberration work brilliantly in this case. It's a beautiful game even today. But now, five years later, Alien Isolation has returned, this time on Switch, thanks to Feral Interactive. It's an interesting conversion on the face of it then. Isolation is still a very modern looking game, but it's also a cross-gen game, making its appearance on Switch somewhat less surprising perhaps. Beyond this, a lot has changed since 2014, so there is potential for further improving the game's visuals. The results then are nothing short of amazing. While there are some sacrifices made in select areas, there's also improvements which elevate this version over the original console release. The largest improvement stems from image quality. On Switch, Isolation uses a mix of dynamic resolution scaling, contrast adaptive sharpening, and TAA. In docked mode, the game maintains a resolution near 1080p most of the time, but drops to resolutions such as 1026p, 900p, 882p, and as low as 756p in worst case. But this is where things get interesting. You see, I've been arguing for a while now that pixel counts simply aren't as important as they once were, and for good reason. While Xbox One and PS4 are locked at 1080p and thus higher resolution on average than the Switch version, in reality, the Switch version looks substantially cleaner in motion. And this is due to a reliance on a more modern accumulation temporal anti-aliasing solution. This approach massively reduces in-surface aliasing and edge shimmering to the point where it looks flat out better than the original console releases, despite often running at a lower resolution. It's especially evident in scenes such as this. Look at the sign here on PlayStation 4. There's a lot of visible shimmering. On Switch, however, it's much cleaner looking overall in motion. 
This is consistent throughout the adventure with a great number of surfaces now exhibiting smooth edges on Switch thanks to this new method of anti-aliasing. So even when the resolution dips below 1080p, the result is still more visually attractive and cleaner to the eye. It's this combination of temporal anti-aliasing with adaptive sharpening which helps create this beautiful overall image. Moving over to portable mode, isolation excels here as well. The native 720p resolution of the Switch screen is the primary target here with the minimum resolution coming in around 504p in the absolute worst case scenario. The truth is, this is one of the nicest looking portable Switch games I've played in quite some time with super clean edges and minimal aliasing. The key here is that image quality is overall an improvement over every single other console version of the game as a result of these new techniques. It's the first time in Switch history, perhaps, that such a thing has proven true, but more importantly, I think this demonstrates that pixel quality is more important than pixel count in many cases. This is why Pixel Count Wars raged last generation on PS3 and 360 where anti-aliasing techniques had not yet evolved, and a small difference in pixel count could result in a massive difference in quality. But that doesn't mean everything has made the jump. There are still some visual features that were cut in the transition to Switch. Firstly, ambient occlusion appears to have been either stripped out or changed dramatically. The lack of contact shadows are evident in this scene on Switch when compared to PlayStation 4. Normally this would have a huge impact on presentation quality, but as a result of the low light presentation here in Alien Isolation, it rarely rears its head. But if you know what to look for, you'll certainly spot its absence. Secondly, Motion Blur is now disabled. It was used in a rather subtle fashion with a low shutter speed in the original release, and lamentably, that is no longer the case here on Switch. Furthermore, adjustments have been made to LOD and shadow draw in distance. For instance, as I move in and out, note how the pipes lose detail on Switch from this distance. On PlayStation 4, the same technique is used, but you need to be standing further back from the pipes to trigger this jump. So LOD transitions are slightly more aggressive on Switch. The same is true of shadows, which we can see here against the door lock in this scene. Notice how it is already visible on PS4 before it appears on Switch. Beyond this, there's three other elements to discuss, sound, video, and loading. Audio is critical to the isolation experience, especially surround sound. Unfortunately, a lot of recent Switch games have strangely omitted this option entirely, relying instead on a 2.0 stereo mode. That's not the case here. Alien Isolation takes full advantage of the Switch's surround sound capabilities, and the sound quality itself is on par with the PlayStation 4 version. This is very important for a game like this, and in fact, I'd recommend you either play it using a surround sound system or via headphones. It's just not the same in portable mode using the internal speakers. Then there's full motion video, and this is one area where we do see a drop in quality. Certain sequences rely on video playback, and the videos themselves have been more heavily compressed on Switch, likely to reduce overall file size. It's not an issue in portable mode per se, but you will notice this on a larger display. At least playback is smooth. When the game first launched on PlayStation 4, this was not the case, though it was later patched. Lastly, there's the loading times. These are all relatively lengthy on all versions of the game when moving between larger maps, and PS4 is slightly faster overall, but they are comparable. Thankfully, loading times upon death are extremely quick, so this is only something you need to contend with when moving between these different areas. What this means overall then is that it's not entirely accurate to say that the Switch version is superior overall. It's not, it's missing some details. It loads slightly longer and the video clips are more compressed. During general moment to moment gameplay however, I feel the new anti-aliasing technique has a stronger overall impact on visual quality. Shimmering is an omnipresent issue on PS4 to the point where the image simply never appears quite clean. 
This is always a problem. In this case, I believe Pharaoh has demonstrated exceptional attention to detail in converting the game to Switch. The team is focused on improving image quality above all else, while other changes likely intended to improve performance are relatively subtle and not likely to be noticed without doing side-by-side -side comparisons. It's as if they went through the game very carefully, considered what the player will be seeing at any single point, and ensured that changes made on Switch would result in the best possible presentation. So while Switch is not technically superior overall, it does have certain significant advantages over the original PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game, which I think are critical. And of course, it also retains the bulk of the technical features implemented in the original version. Things like these reflections are perfectly maintained and look excellent. In this case, it's likely that they're using a planar reflection technique to pull this off. Then there's the materials, which I can't say enough good things about. For a game released in 2014, the quality is exceptional and it brilliantly conveys everything from polished metal to cardboard and beyond. Lens flares are used effectively to convey contrast between the darkness and high intensity spotlights. Various shapes are used depending on the type of light as well. Then there's volumetric lighting, which is used throughout the game, and it is of course present and accounted for on Nintendo Switch. This is used to create the illusion of light interacting with the ship's atmosphere. It doesn't appear to lose any fidelity on Switch versus PlayStation 4. Chromatic aberration and film grain are also both featured prominently on Switch, but if you prefer, you can disable them. This is an option. Previously on PS4, only film grain could be adjusted using a slider. So overall, the presentation here is just phenomenal, even five years after its initial release, and Switch retains just about everything save for those few details I mentioned earlier. But what about the last gen version, specifically PlayStation 3? Well, this is an entirely different situation. The PS3 version is lower resolution, it's missing many effects, and it runs very poorly in comparison. I'm relying on captures from our original analysis here, and there's very clearly a vast difference in quality. Now, on the surface, it seems silly to compare Switch with PlayStation 3, but we must not forget that there are instances of games which ran worse on Switch than they did on last generation consoles. Things like Resident Evil 5 and 6, or even Saints Row 3, though supposedly that has been patched. Perhaps I'll check it out sometime in the future. So things are looking good overall then, with the cuts made in the right places on Switch and improvements implemented where it matters. But what about frame rate? Well, this is interesting and there are two elements to discuss here. Most importantly, the frame rate in general is very consistent. It targets 30 frames per second and delivers an even 33 milliseconds throughout most of the game. For this video, I've opted to increase the speed of playback during certain sections here in order to share a larger chunk of the frame rate analysis with you, and you can see that by and large, it's extremely stable. It sticks right along the 30 FPS line, as you would hope. Now, of course, I've only had an opportunity to play through the earlier sections of the game, and it's possible that later scenes may exhibit additional issues, but I expect the typical experience to play out without issue, as we see here. Now, let's look at the points where it does actually drop frames then. In general, these dips are relatively minor, lasting just a few seconds at most, before the game snaps back to 30 frames per second. Perhaps these issues are triggered by I.O. operations or a hammering on the CPU. In certain other scenes, when the screen is filled with lots of alpha transparency, we also see dips below 30 frames per second, just like this. The original PS4 and Xbox One versions also exhibit minor problems in select areas as well, so honestly, this is expected. Yeah, this escape sequence was pretty awful on Xbox One, if you recall. And just for good measure, here's how it runs on the Switch. I captured over one hour of frame rate analysis footage, and this is just about the worst that I ran into, so it's looking good. But there's another issue I noticed. At certain points, mainly when new areas appear to be loading, fluidity is momentarily compromised in a way that doesn't appear on any frame rate graph. Look carefully and you'll see what I mean. Notice the slight stutter? So why doesn't this appear on the frame rate graph? Well, that's because it's not actually dropping frames. Instead, when this occurs, 
the distance in which the camera moves seemingly becomes inconsistent, momentarily at least. So it's stable, but visually less smooth during these brief moments. A curious thing, and I have to wonder if it can be addressed in a patch. Even with these minor blips, however, the overall performance is very stable, and a massive improvement over last-gen versions. It's also worth noting that the Switch version does not suffer from screen tearing like all the other console versions. It's likely using triple buffering, which helps eliminate this problem. But on the flip side, this also means that there is a slight increase in input latency over the adaptive V-Sync used in the original release. Now, just for fun, here it is again. This is how Alien Isolation runs on PlayStation 3. A reminder of what the cross-gen period was like after PS4 and Xbox One first launched. Isolation is among a large number of games released across current and last generation consoles during this period. And while it's better than many conversions, it's still not very smooth at all, and certainly not an optimal way to play the game. Again, I only mention this as we've seen ports where the PS3 or 360 versions offered similar or superior performance to Switch. This is most certainly not the case here with Isolation, thankfully. Just for good measure then, here's how the game runs on Switch when played in portable mode. Now I spent most of my time in docked mode, but portable does seem to deliver a very similar level of performance across the board. In fact, it's nearly perfect most of the time, aside from those non-frame rate related skips and the occasional hitch due to, likely, I.O. Other than that though, it's fantastic in portable mode. I just recommend that you play it with headphones if you're going to go this route. So what about extra features on Switch then? Well, there's good news here too. Firstly, this version includes all available DLC that was released for the original game, so it's content complete straight away. Secondly, it also includes the option to use motion aiming, but only when aiming your pistol or using the motion tracker. But really, this is actually a stroke of genius as it doesn't require you to worry about your hand position during normal exploration gameplay, but when you bring up one of those tools, suddenly you can take advantage of its precision, and it feels great. So yeah, the Switch port, it's glorious overall, but beyond that, the game itself is still incredible. This remains one of my favorite games of the generation, a perfect blend of exploration, horror, action, and resource management. It's almost akin to a System Shock light of sorts, and I love it. This Switch version just happens to be a great excuse to revisit the game. This is also a great moment for Feral Interactive, its developer. The studio has been around for a long time now and focuses primarily on porting games to platforms such as Mac and Linux. Its arrival on Switch, however, with both Alien Isolation and Grid Autosport reveals that they also have quite the chops when it comes to console programming. This is a team to watch going forward when it comes to future Switch conversions, that's for sure. So yeah, overall, Alien Isolation is an incredible port. Is it better than PS4? Well, in some ways, no, but the overall experience, I feel, is improved as a result of the dramatically improved anti-aliasing techniques on display. This is the first time I can truly say that a current generation port to the Switch looks great on both a TV and in portable mode, even at a large size. It's still a beautiful game no matter how you play it. But that's it for the moment. If you enjoyed this video, as always, be sure to like and subscribe and ring the notification bell for instant updates from Digital Foundry. And of course, find us over on Twitter. And until next time, watch out for aliens.